Hello, everyone, and welcome to what promises to be another exciting episode of Physics Chat. Today, Dan and Nathan are joining me in the hosting panel. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, very excited for the episode. Perfect. Our guest for today's episode is Robin Munoz, who is a PhD student at the Institute of Cosmology and Gravitation. How are you, Robin? Hi, hello, everyone. Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, excited to have you. So what have you been up to this last week? Um, well, in my past time, I knit and uh, I actually made this sweater. I don't know if you can see the the purple. Yeah. Nice. So it's a project that I have going on. Cool. Yeah. I think we all think your arts and crafts are always amazing. Um, is, there anything you. is there anything you're particularly proud of? Is there anything you really want to make still? Well, once I made a, a scarf, that was uh, shaped like the Mobius strip. And nice. the, the particular design that I did on that was quite complicated. And it took me a long time. And so it's something that uh, I like a lot, even though it's uh, not the most practical thing to wear. But um, otherwise, what I'm working on right now is um, a shawl. It's just a little lacy type of thing. I don't know if you can see the little uh, diamond shape that's going on on the pattern, but that's my current project right now. Well, it's a special pleasure having Robin on the show today because she's not only ex an expert on knitting, she's also an expert on numerical relativity, uh, which is something that we still haven't talked about in, in physics chat. So my as my first question, I would like to ask you to introduce us to the world of numerical relativity. Yeah, so um, numerical relativity is a computational method to do simulations, uh, gravity, and specifically the general relativity theory of gravity, right? So I need to give some basics on um, GR, right? General relativity. The usual description that people use is it's a space-time sheet. And on this sheet, uh, if you have mass, then that curves the sheet, right? And so mass curves the sheet, but then the sheet determines the trajectory of particles, right? So you have matter curving sheet, this space-time sheet, and then this space-time sheet determines how matter moves. So you have space-time and matter that are related that way to give gravity. So we've, we've talked a little bit about GR in some previous episodes, but could you maybe elaborate a bit more on what space-time is? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there are lots of very helpful videos explaining this. I know that Chris made a specific video explaining that. That's quite good. But so space-time is essentially, well, space is you have um, distances, right? From, you usually talk about rods. So like a measurement of the distance, right? And then you have time as you can measure with your clock. And so space-time relates the two and the two can actually um, vary. So you have your distance that can be elongated or contracted, and the same thing can happen to space, and the two of them work together. And so that's what people refer to as uh, space-time. Sounds amazing. So we've had a, a little description of general relativity, but numerical relativity, how, how does that work? For numerical relativity, you have your space-time sheet, which essentially you map as a grid right? And so this grid has data points. And to each of those points, you have some terms associated that tell you how um, distances are changed over time and how time is changed as well. And so you have this grid whose shape can vary over time. And so um, with this numerical tool, you have methods of measuring that and evolving it because GR is a bit complicated. And so to actually do the maths to see how different systems evolve is really complex. And so being able to simulate that is quite practical. So what kinds of things might you simulate? When, when does it become useful? The most popular use of numerical relativity is with uh, black holes merging. Right? So people simulate two black holes, so very 
compact objects where light can't even escape. So you have these two objects that spiral into each other to merge together. And when they do that, they release gravitational waves. And with these simulations, you can measure what this gravitational wave signal. So in practice, it means that when you have a gravitational wave, your distances oscillate in a sense, and we can measure that on Earth. And so with these types of simulations, we can know what the signal will look like. And so these gravitational wave detectors know what to look for. I think that's the most popular use, but you can also uh, simulate black holes and see how matter going around that would look like, because otherwise you would never be able to see black holes. We have now been able to see them via the matter going around it, right? And so this is something that you can simulate as well. Fascinating. And these these um, simulations look look amazing. It's an amazing topic, but what motivated you to pursue it for your, for your PhD? Yeah, I, um, well, I always thought that GR was super interesting and cool. And so during my studies, I learned more and more about it. And then in my master, I had a numerical relativity project. And so I simulated how a cloud going next to a black hole on a flyby trajectory would look like and you can see in the video that where the black hole is cut out that that region really scatters away all of the material as the as the cloud flies by the black hole and so i thought that that was super interesting and so i just continued that uh for my phd where i found a phd doing numerical relativity that's brilliant um but as i'm sure you know robin it is uh, also a tradition here in physics chat to ask the guest a random question at some point during the show. Um, and I think now is the perfect time. Um, yeah. So I know that you're a cat lover. You you have a yeah, cat. Yeah, I have a cat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How's Haley? How's Haley doing? Probably sleeping. The sun just came out, so she will have found uh, sun rays to, to sleep in. So then my random question to you would be, out of these nine cats, which one would you identify the most as? Looking at the cats, uh, <laughs> really funny. I would say I would say five, or not actually. I would say three. Just thinking of the dread of actually having to write up my thesis at this point <laughs> in time. You know, <laughs> you can see the terror in the eyes. Yeah. I think so I'll go with three. Nice. What about you, Dan? We we had a lot of technical difficulties setting up today's meeting, and it's also quite early in the morning for me. So I would say number eight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty done with the day already. What about you, Sergi? Mm, I think I would be four. I think when I'm always in the office, I always end up sitting with my legs on the table. Um, you do, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. So maybe four, yeah. And you, uh, Nathan? Yeah, I think if you'd have asked me yesterday, uh, probably eight. There was a lot of debugging of code going on, but I fixed it. So maybe, oh, maybe great. two now. I'm feeling a little a little crazy with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to some more of the physics. Yeah. Who would you say are the important people in your field, Robin? All the people that made it possible to do this, right? All the people that did the maths, all the people that did the codes. I can think of in particular Yvonne Choquet-Brois. She's a French mathematician and she um well she wrote the equations in form that means that they're stable and if the equations are stable then we can simulate them so that's um that's a very important thing that she did right for the field uh, since then people have been able to do that in different methods and so on but she was the first to do that otherwise when um people started doing simulations i i can think of uh, john centrella she's one of the first to do simulations and as far as i know the first one to do uh cosmological simulations in numerical relativity and then the field as a whole uh transitioned to look at black hole mergers and all of that but um cosmology is becoming more popular again nowadays but she was the first to do that that i know of. cool and then speaking of important figures in your field that of course brings us on to you what specifically is your research about what are you what are you exploring at the moment yeah well i'm i'm actually doing simulations of cosmology so cosmology is the field of um well you're studying the universe as a whole right and so what i do is i run simulations of uh, large structures in the universe and so right now the best model we have is like well you have the big bang 
right? And then the universe is expanding. And then at some point, these large structures, they don't expand out with the universe. They like hold on to each other to create structure and galaxies and all of that. And so um, I can show you a video of one of my simulations. Here you essentially see the grid uh, of my simulation and the whole grid is expanding with the expansion of the universe. But then in areas that are denser, that region is not expanding as much as other regions. And at some point instead, it like contracts inwards to create the structures that we have in our universe, allowing us to be here, right? <laughs> That's really interesting. I really like the simulation. Yeah. What can you tell us about the future of numerical relativity? Where do you see the field going? That's a good question. Um, so... Obviously, all of the practical aspect related to gravitational waves is something that's going to continue on forever. Then numerical relativity is good to test out what the structure of neutron stars is made of, right? Because that would impact the gravitational wave that uh, they emit. Something gradually I'm seeing more of is people are trying to figure out ways of doing simulations with modified version of general relativity, right? So that we can look at theories of gravity that are different and that we would like to test out. And also whatever you want to simulate, then people can like think of ways to do that. The crazier, the better. It'd be super interesting to see. Well, uh, it's going to be very exciting to see how people come up in like ways of using numerical relativity in, in the future. And yeah, thank you very much, Robin, for joining us today and sharing with us your knowledge on numerical relativity, as well as your amazing knitting skills. And for all our audience, do think about which cat you identify as. We really want to know. That is all we have time for on today's physics chat. And we hope you join us next time as we talk to some more interesting physicists. We hope you have a great time and goodbye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Whatever you want to simulate, then people can like think of ways to do that. The crazier, the better. Thanks.